Hey guys, I'm back. I know it's been a while. It's been about almost five years since I posted anything, you know, like my walk related or how's it going with my walk or have I been progressing? Have I been falling or what's going on? So here it is. First of all, the reason why I haven't been posting is because I had to be renewed. I had to get a new heart. My mind had to be washed by the blood of the Lord Jesus. Because when you become a believer that first year, believe me, it's amazing. It's, it's, a, it's a honeymoon that you never want to that you never want to leave. You understand me? But once that honeymoon is over, the Lord says, now is the time to test you. Amen? So I had to be renewed. You see, there's a red spot on me now that every time the devil looks at me, he says, if it wasn't for that red spot on him, he will be mine. But now nah, that red spot is the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, the blood of the Lamb. Amen? Now, the reason for this channel is that, that we may know Thee, O God, that we may know the one and true living God. Amen? And the reason why I named this channel Do Not Be Deceived is because I was very, very, very deceived. And the enemy had a grip on me. <clears throat> and if it wasn't for the Lord Jesus Christ, I would still be deceived. So let me get into it. Um, I want to tell you guys about my testimony really quick. Because the last video that I made about five years ago is way too long. It's about an hour and like an hour and a half. And, you know, people don't have time to be sitting around for an hour and a half. So I'm going to get into it really quick. So as a child, I would say that I, I will go back to like four years old, maybe five. I can remember demonic attacks. I remember demonic activity in my room, in me. I, I, felt pres I felt a demonic presence around me. I just wasn't sure what it was. And since I, when I got older, I came to find out that my family all practiced witchcraft. And my mom was a witch. My aunt was a witch. My other aunt was a witch. Every single family member, my grandma was a witch. Everybody was a witch in my family. And the reason is because they... They come from a very poor country, you feel me? And in these poor countries, there there is no no way to to progress. They have no power. There's no money. It's, it's poverty. So what they do is they look for a source. You understand me? And Satan is very good at giving you what you want. You understand me? The Lord gives you what you need. So my family went towards the root of witchcraft and witchcraft runs deep in my family deep in my generation and what happened was in 2001 my my mom my aunt my other aunt my grandma every single family member turned to the lord jesus christ except me that was the only one i was still too young i was about like I believe like 12 or 13 you know um and i wanted nothing to do with the lord like yeah, my grandma grew me up Catholic, but, you know, I wanted nothing to do with the Lord Jesus Christ. Like, you understand me? So what happened was, um, I would have demonic visitations in my room as a child. They, um, they would appear on the side of my bed. Um, they, were, they would lay on me and I can't really move. Um, I, I would feel their presence around me and it would be so, it would happen every single night or every other day that it became normal to me. I would see my mother doing her rituals in her room. She would have an altar to a certain God that she worshiped that would give her money, would give her anything she wanted, the cars. Um, she would go to the casinos and she would win, she would win thousands of dollars. And... Why wouldn't you worship a God who gives you all you want? You understand me? Especially when you live in the flesh, when you're carnal, and you want this and this and that is gimme, gimme, gimme. Who who wouldn't want to have a God like that? But that leads to destruction. You feel me? All these material things, they're going to pass away. All this is going to pass away. So I remember my mother used to set up an altar for her certain God, 
and she would put water, she would put food on the table for it, and she would leave it there. And an hour later, the water will be completely gone, and an hour later, the food will be completely gone. And it became real to me, so it, it, it was normal to me. So, the older I got, um, the stronger that demonic visitations got. So, one night, me and my cousin decided to play the Ouija board because her friend brought it over. And when we were using it, the spirit told us that they are the ones that visit me at night, that they are the ones that I see in the sky because I used to see them in the sky. I used to believe in aliens really deep. And they told me that they are the aliens that would visit me every night. And um, it kept telling me that when I turned 18, 19, 20 years old, they would give me power. They told me that they would give me psychic abilities. And we wrote everything down. And um, it told me that they are the ones that visit me at night, that they are the ones that, that I see every single night, that they're the ones that I see in the sky. Um, and that when I turned 18, 19, and 20, I would be a powerful being. And you know, that sounded really good to me. But then me and my cousin decided to ask it, what's its name? And it went to the letter D, to the E, to the V, to the I. And me and my cousin looked at each other and we said, yo, it's about to spell the devil. And we got so scared that we were like, nah, we can't do this anymore. So we threw it, right? And we said, door closed. But do you think that a, a demonic spirit that is stronger than us, wiser than us, that has been living way longer than us, is going to leave because you say door closed to a, at the end of playing the Ouija board? Nah. nah. Do not be deceived. Amen? So, after that day, the demonic meditations got stronger. And I was in about 11th grade. And a high school professor introduced me to the law of attraction. And listen, it sounded amazing. Like, I can get whatever I want. All I have to do is think about it and I'll go to the universe and the universe will give it back to me. Say no more. Let's do it. And what my professor did was she hypnotizes in class. She said, everybody close your eyes. So we, we closed our eyes. And she counted three, two, one. And she said, you guys are on top of a mountain. And the sun looks like this. And the landscape looks like this. And let me tell you, everything she said, it was as if I was there on the spot. And I couldn't believe it. I was like, what is this power? What's this, what's this power? I want it. How do, what is this? And I, she became my, my first teacher in the demonic world. And um, so I started getting deep and deep and deeper into the law of attraction. And let me tell you, everything I wanted, I was getting. The money, the cars, sex, women. The, I was selling drugs, so I was getting a whole bunch of custies, a bunch of customers that would buy my drugs. I was caking. As an 18, 19, 20-year-old, I was caking it. And it was so good, you know, everybody was looking up to me, like I had the fame, I had I had the, all the pleasures of the world, but my soul was rotten. And um, you see, um, I wanted more though, you feel me? And my professor came to a point where she couldn't teach me anymore, everything she knew, she, I, we already went through it all. So I said, there has to be more. And then I came across yoga and Eastern mysticism, right? So I attended this yoga center in my town. And let me tell you, I became really good at it because I am the type of person that when I do something, I go 100%. I don't play around. And what happened was, like, I was doing yoga for, I would go in early, like, three, four hours early and straight do my practices until I got them perfect, right? So, you know, the stretching was good and all that stuff was good until I got to the doctrine. And then the professor makes us meditate and I felt a being come into me and I said, whoa, what's this? And that being will whisper in my ear things that people were thinking and I would tell them what they were thinking. 
and people will start thinking that I am a psychic, that I am a medium. So the so whatever those demons, the devil said to me in that Ouija board was coming to pass. And um, what happened was, I needed more though, you feel me? So I joined a meditation center that I found at another town. And I went over there and I'm going to tell you, it was... It was legit power, but it wasn't power from above. It was power from below. And even the law of attraction, that thing is real. Believe me, it is real, but it's not, it's not coming from above. It's coming from below. And it's to distract you from the Lord Jesus Christ. Because the, the more material things you get, you say to yourself, why do I need God for if I'm getting these things from the universe? You understand me? So it made me drift away from the Lord Jesus. Since my grandma grew me up Catholic, my grandma on my father's side grew me up Catholic, I didn't need the Lord Jesus Christ anymore. Why should I pray to him if the universe is giving me everything? See, I was worshiping the creation over the creator, just like the word says. And um, so I joined the meditation center and it was a pure cult up in there. Um, I started following this guy named, his name was Rajinder Singh Ji Maharaj, and he's from India, and he's supposed to be a god. And their doctrine was that we are gods, that the same lie that, that, that Satan gave Eve in the garden, that she can become god, I got the same lie, and I fell for it, I believed it, because I was getting all this power. I was getting, I was able to control this flesh, I was able to control my thoughts, but it was power coming from below, you feel me? And it kept me hungry. See, Satan didn't show me the end. He only showed me the beginning of how good it is. But he didn't show me the end, which was destruction. And um, so then one day I said, yo, I need some more. I need more. I need to speak to that. Because the, the person who, who, show, who teaches you the doctrine, they call him the master, the great master. So then, then you start to get into ascended master, angelic beings. Um, and then they start saying that the Lord Jesus Christ is just another man, that we can become like him. You feel me? So then one day I, I go up to one of my teachers and I said, listen, I need more. Um, I'm meditating for eight hours a day. I'm doing yoga for eight hours a day and I need more. I need, I need more, more power. But what I was doing was when I would get into my meditative states, these demons were coming in and out of me, in and out of me, in, out, in, out. And... And then they said, you need to become a vegetarian if you want more power. And I said, all right, say no more. Let's do it. Because I go 100%. I want this. When I want something, I go 100%. And I was deceived. So I said, let's do it. So I became a vegetarian. There's nothing wrong becoming a vegetarian. It's just that the reason why I was doing it, it was wrong. You feel me? And um, I said to myself, I'm going to become a God. And I was telling my parents, I was telling my family members, yo, I'm a God, you're a God, we're all gods. I was an, an evangelist for, these, for this thing. You feel me? And some of us Christians can't even go and preach the word of God. And us New Agers, we, when we were in New Age, we were preaching this thing hard, heavy. And because, you know, it gratified the flesh. You feel me? And um, we want everybody to have this as well. So, um, a few months into it, I started to get sick because, um, when you're in, when you inhabit demonic beings in your body, you're going to get sick. Believe me. And, um, I started to get really weak. I started to get very skinny and these demons were able to answer me even better. So then, um, I said, I need more power. See, I was searching for power, more power. You feel me? So... One of the teachers says to me, the master is going to be in a few towns over. You should go see him and get initiated. And I said, yo, say no more. We are out. So then um, we go to the spot and I brought my whole entire family. It was like if you're getting baptized into, into the kingdom of the Lord. It's the same thing. You got, I got initiated into the kingdom of Satan. So I went to go meet with this high priest of Satan and... Um, I brought my whole entire family. So uh, the, the believers, see, I was no longer New Age anymore. I was on something else now. I was on total witchcraft. I was on total demon, into the deep demonic world. So um, all unbelievers had to go to a separate room and us believers had to stay downstairs. 
and there was one lady who was not a believer and she was just there you know seeing what's up with this and one of the high priests of Satan touched her on the forehead they used to call it the third eye um, at that time I had all my chakras aligned every single chakra was opened I, I was going super hard and the dude touches her on the forehead and her spirit comes out of her and she's in the middle of the room and at that spot she became a believer right on the spot she became a believer so what happened was every believer had to, every unbeliever had to go to another room and us believer had to stay downstairs for the initiation and what happened was we all sit down and then they say we're going to give you five names and these five names are the names of God and when you call upon these names they will show up God will show up, they said. And when you call upon these names, it will open the, the gates of every single dimension that you that you try to enter. And I said, yo, let's do it. And let me tell you, they made us start chanting these names. We were chanting them, chanting them, going hard, hard, like chanting, like calling upon them, calling upon the demons. But I didn't know that that's what we were doing. You feel me? So at one point, we were all chanting heavy and then we felt this dark presence come into the room and these beings whoo, dropped into the room they were right before us and yo let me tell you i started shaking i started getting super sweaty i felt like this hot this strange like hot fire on me like it was so bad i don't know what was happening to me but i was so about it like let's do it whatever i gotta go through i want to become god I want power. I want to reach these dimensions. I want to. I want to astral project even better because I was into astral projection as well, and I was able to do it with control. So, um, after that, the demons they they did what they had to do. They they basically baptized into the kingdom of Satan. So now I had these five names that whenever I needed some, I would call upon them. And then um, we go home. They said, you cannot tell nobody. This stays between us believers. Unbelievers cannot know what happened here. And the reason for that is because if I would have told my mother, who was a Christian woman, and if I would have told my family members who were Christians already, yo, they would have they would have delivered me on the spot. But I couldn't tell them nothing. Everybody kept asking me. My girlfriend kept asking me, what happened in there? How was it? Did you like it? And I said, yeah, I loved it. It was good. But I can't say a word. But So they respected that. My mother kept trying to get me to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. At one point, because I kept talking to her about, Mom, you're a God, you're a God, I'm a God. And my mom was like, yo, something's wrong with you, kid. And my mom at one point said, you know what? I leave it in the hands of the Lord. So, but the thing was that when I was in my room practicing my witchcraft, when I was in my room calling upon these demons, my mom was in the other room praying for my soul. You feel me? The Lord is very faithful to praying mothers. Amen? So... As soon as I go home, yo, I start practicing hard. I'm calling upon these demons and they're showing up. They're coming in me. They're leaving, coming in me. And then I got, into, I got to a point where I was able to speak to the high priest of Satan of my cult in the spirit. When I would go into my meditations, I would be able to speak to him. He would baptize me with water. Like We would talk. He would show me um, how to get into these dark spots in, in, inside your chakras. Like It's just totally demonic. And they say that you needed that master because he is the light. See, these people are trying to be Christ on earth. Christ is the only light. So, one of my prof one of my uh, teachers uh, calls me one day. He says, "Yo, the high, the 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 teacher um, is gonna be in Chicago. You should go." And I say, "Yo, I'm out. I need to go see this dude. I need more power. He needs to show me how to become a god." And um, so I drive 16 hours to Chicago to go see this dude. And let me tell you, um, they had a meeting at the Marriott Hotel. And let me tell you, it was hundreds of people there to go see this dude. And everybody was going like this, like, master, master. And, like, they were kissing his feet, touching his garment. Like, these people were really treating this guy like he was the Lord Jesus. And I was not about that. Like, I am good. Uh, my ego was off the roof. I was not going to bow down to no other man. And to this day, I don't bow down to no man, but I bow down to the Father. You feel me? 
like the Apostle Paul said, I bow my knee to the Lord God, therefore I bow my knee to no other. You understand me? And I bow down to no other God but my Lord Jesus Christ. But I will bow down to the Lord Jesus Christ in you. You understand me? I will love you and I will love my Lord Jesus Christ in you. Amen? So, um, <clears throat> I go to Chicago. Everybody's praising this guy. Everybody's loving on this guy. And he's going around the whole room touching everybody's third eye and like telling them everything is going to be okay. You are healed. Your family member is healed. Blah, blah, blah. And this dude is riding in a nice Audi. Listen, I don't mind if you got an Audi. I don't mind if you got money. The Lord, he is good. He is good. The Lord is good. But when it has taken over your heart, that's a whole different story. Now that's your God. You feel me? So, new initiates are supposed to have a, a private meeting with the master. I, I don't even like calling him master, but I'm just trying to tell you guys what's up. So, new initiates are supposed to have um, private meetings with him. And there was two of us from my town. So, I can't, I can't wait. I need to talk to this dude. But prior to that, he passed by me and I said, Master, I need you to show me how to become a god. And he just touched my forehead and he said, yes, yes, everything is going, to be, is going to be okay. But that wasn't enough for me. So I couldn't wait for this private interview. So, you know, I go to the bathroom. I wash my hands. I'm trying to be clean for the dude. Like, yo, we're about to do this today. I, I drove 16 hours here and I ain't leaving without, without power. You feel me? Um, so... It was two of us. So the master and his wife are approaching us. But before this, let me tell you, when we were all sitting down at the Marriott Hotel at the conference, I, I don't know why, but I know the Lord did this to me because when I saw that dude, the moment I laid my eyes on him when he was doing his speaking, something told me that this dude was fake. Not fake as in like he didn't have power or anything like that. He was a phony as in like this dude is deceiving everybody. Something is up with this guy, and he's definitely deceiving me too. So I kept my eyes on him, and I stared at him, and he stared at me back, and he knew that I was staring at him for a reason. And then I looked at his family members who were on the front row, and I said, if this guy is a false, if he's a phony, he's deceiving me, these people, and his family members, or his family members are in, in this too. But I dropped it. I said, you know what? It's all good. I got to talk to this dude. Let's do it. So he's approaching me with his wife, and I, I just couldn't wait to speak to him. And yo, let me tell you, he comes up to me and then totally avoids me and goes to the girl, to the lady who, who is the, also the new initiate with me. And I was like, what's up? Like, I need you to show me how to become, how be, how to become a god. I need more power, sir. And he says to me, yes, yes, everything is going to be okay. And I was so thrown off and his wife noticed that she came up to me and was showing me more love than him. If this dude is supposed to be God, why are you not showing me love, man? Like, come on, what's up? And he still didn't want nothing to do with me. He just wanted to talk to the lady. But I believe that he saw that the spirit of Satan in him saw something in me that he wanted nothing to do with. You feel me? And... So let me tell you, I stormed out of there. Everybody was like, are you okay? I'm like, nah, I'm out of here. I'm done with this. So I drove 16 hours home. I didn't say a word. I didn't speak to nobody. I wanted nothing to do with nobody. So then I get home and I see my mom and my mom was like, how was it? And I said, ah, it was good. It was amazing. You know, my ego was off, off the chart. I was trying to like, you know, since I'm trying to recruit people into this, why am I going to make it look bad? You feel me? So I told my mom, yo, it's perfect. It was amazing. Oof. And then, um, but at the moment that door closed in my room, yo, I was a wreck. I was like, what is going on? And I'm not going to lie. At that very moment, I got on my knees and I said, you know what? God, if you're real, you got to show me something. So then I go on YouTube, right? And this video comes up, which I have added to my channel. So if you can look it up, you'll find it. This video comes up called Gods of the New Age. And I said to myself, Gods of the New Age? I'm practicing the New Age. 
and I'm looking to become a guy. What's this? So I, I press play because the video was there somehow. I don't even know how it got on my computer. On, on, on the moment I turned on YouTube, it was there already. So um, <clears throat> I st I'm starting to watch it, right? And I see that everything that I was doing, these people in, the, in, in this video were doing. And the video revealed to me that all the, the meditation I was doing was demonic. All the, the yoga I was doing was demonic. And all the chanting I was doing, demonic. And all the, all the movements I was going through, the shaking was demonic. And, that, and what was crazy was that the dude that I was worshiping, not worshiping, but the dude that I was following was in that video and his father was in that video. And I said to myself, what the heck? No way have I really been deceived. And I'm going to tell you, I was a wreck. I couldn't believe it. And it revealed to me that everything I was doing was of Satan, of the devil. And quickly, that thought, as when I was a, when I was a Catholic back in the day, it came to me, the devil, oh no, I can't be doing this. And I said, you know what? I'm not doing this no more. And then I heard that voice. And the demon said to me, you're not getting away that easy. And I said, what the heck was going on right now? And then let me tell you, I go to bed that same day. And that very same day, the demonic attacks came through. And instead of these, de these demons coming to answer me and help me and guide me and, sh and whisper to me good things and wisdom and knowledge, because I had, I had all, I had it all. I was on my way to becoming a big, big high priest of Satan. Thank the Lord, I it did not happen. Thank the Lord. So, um, that same very night, yo, these demons came on me, pressed me in my bed. I can't move my mouth. I couldn't open and I couldn't speak. These demons were crawling on my walls. They were appearing on the side of my bed, big ugly headed beings that they look like straight eight like straight gray gray aliens like demonic some were o like od hairy um and they will cover my mouth i can't speak i can't move one time they levitated me off my bed and i dropped back on my bed and like i did not know what was going on and um this happened night after night after night after night after night. I didn't know what to do. I was being tortured for days. And I would have to sleep with my light on because I was so scared, you feel me? I was full of darkness. There was no light in me or no light around me to protect me. So I had to turn on the natural light. And um, I would hop on my computer every night. And I was up to like 3, 5 in the morning searching, researching. How can I make these things go away? And let me tell you that the things that I found out fascinated me because I was seeking, I was out for wisdom. I was seeking wisdom, knowledge, power. I wanted it all. Even though I was being revealed the truth and, and, and I was so scared of what was going on, I was fascinated at the same time. Like, this is something new. This is new truth that I'm learning right now. And let me tell you, every single time I did research, the conclusion was the Lord Jesus Christ. Call upon Jesus Christ. Call upon his name and they will flee. But you know what? I was kind of believing and I kind of wasn't believing. I was on the fence, just like some Christians are, just like some of you that are on the fence, got one foot in, one foot out. What's up? So, um, I kind of was believing and the demons were getting worse once they saw that I was kind of believing. And I said, yo, I'm not meditating. I'm not doing yoga. I'm not doing none of that. And it was just getting, the demonic attacks were getting so bad that I said, you know what? I'm just going to meditate. Maybe it goes away. And when I got into that meditative state, yo, the, it was like I was paralyzed. I can't even move. And you know what happened that day? That I know the Lord Jesus Christ did this. I know God did this. I know he was in it. Because I, I knew so many names of uh, so-called so gods, which are, which are, which are now demons that I know that um I called upon every single name that I knew I called upon Buddha Krishna I called upon every Indian god that I knew and I even called upon those five names that they gave me at the at the occult spot 
when I got initiated into the occult. And yo, it got worse. There was only one name that I didn't call upon and it was the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And this, this, was, this was the final night. Listen, I was laying down, right? I was ready to go to sleep and I'm, I'm falling into, like, I know I'm falling asleep. And then boom, my body's in the middle of my room. And I said, whoa, am I actually projecting right now? Or oh, what's going on? But I didn't have control. That was the first time I didn't have control during astral projection. And I'm like, and then I turn around and I see my body on the bed. And then, I, and then I go to turn on my light and my hand goes right through the light. And I was like, yo, am I dead right now? What's going on? I was so scared. I was like, yo, my mom's going to find me dead in my room. I don't know what's going on. So then I jumped back in my body and I woke up and I called up everybody. Everybody was like, bro, you just had a bad dream, like blah, blah, blah. You know, and I said, ah, you know what? It's probably a bad, a bad dream. I go to sleep again, and yo, these demons rip me out of my body again, and I'm in the middle of my room. Now I see these demons all over my room, and I just got so scared, I jumped back in my body. Then, they rip me out again. I couldn't do it. And it happened time after time after time that same night that, yo, it really, really forced me. So, I got up. I got on my knees. For the first time ever, I got on my knees. And I said, Jesus, if you're real, if you're real, like if you real, like these people say, if you're real, like this, all these risks, all the, if you're real, like these people say, if you're real, like all the research that I have done, they all say, call upon the Lord Jesus Christ, and they will flee. I call upon you, Lord. I said, God, I call you right now. God, please make these things go away. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I'll throw away the statues. I'll throw away the books. I'll throw away the cards. I'll throw away everything. Please, just save me, please. And I just kept begging and I said, please come save me. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I'll tell the world. I'll call everybody. I'll tell my friends. I'll get on YouTube. I'll get on a camera. I went hard. Listen, the Lord loves prayer, but he loves desperate prayer. You feel me? I was desperate. Just like Rachel, when she told Jacob, Jacob, give me children or I die. It was the same thing. Lord, come save me or I die tonight. You feel me? And yo, let me tell you. Boom. I heard his voice. He said, it is done. And his glory came into my room. And the demons, it, it was like a rushing wind. Like in the upper room. It was a, a rushing wind. And it was like a tornado. And the demons were going crazy. And it wasn't a central light. The whole room was full of light. And I was just like, I was just in awe. I was like, Jesus is real. Jesus is real. And everything in my room was like glorifying the Lord Jesus Christ. Like everything was just like breathing. My room was breathing. And I just couldn't believe it. I was like, Jesus Christ is real. I was convinced on the spot. And I just felt this deep peace. Like, I felt this love. And so, something that I have never felt before. It was a power that I have never felt before. It was true power. But it was an external power. It wasn't, it wasn't like when these demons would give me power from within when they were inhabiting me. And, um, yo, let me tell you, I went to bed. I slept like a baby for the first time. <laughs> Amen. And then, um, yo, the next day I called up all my boys. I called up the meditation center. I called up the yoga center. I called everybody and their moms. I called up everybody. First of all, my boys, I brought some of them into the court with me. I told them, bro. Those, those spirits that we're talking to, those ascended masters that we're talking to, those are not ascended masters, bro. They are demons. And my boy was like, nah, bro, you crazy. I'm like, bro, test them. Ask them who's the Lord Jesus Christ and look how crazy they're going to get. So my boys, they did that, the very same thing I told them. And let me tell you, the demons went crazy on them that they turned on the spot. They turned right away, praise the Lord. And um, my mom was rejoicing like never before. Her prayers were answered. Thank you, Lord. Then 
I called up the yoga center and yo, they laughed at me. They're like, nah, Gerson, you're doing too much, too many drugs. Because I was doing a lot of psychedelics at the time. And they were like, nah, you took too much shrooms, you took too much acid. I'm like, no, I'm telling you, this is real. And they laughed at me. But then the other lady gets on the phone and says, you know what, Gerson? Um, when I was younger, I had the same experience. And, and I said to her, what do you mean? You had the same experience and you're still doing it? And she says, yeah, you know, the yoga is good for me, but I believe in Jesus, blah, blah, blah. And she's compromising, like some of you. And then um, I called up the meditation center, and yo, they laughed at me too. They said, no, Gerson, it's, it's, Jesus is just another man like we are. We can become like him. We can love like him, blah, blah, blah. They, they put him at the human level, as in like, you know, that he's not the son of God. You feel me? And it was just straight. I could not believe it. I was like, God, like, what's good? How can these people see? But it's not their time yet. But it was my time. Thank the Lord. So what I wanted to tell you guys was that, yes, I became a Christian. And there's no going back. There is no going back. What am I going to go to? I seen the darkness. I seen the light. I, what am I going to go to? You feel me? But don't get me wrong. That first, that first year was a honeymoon. It was amazing. It was just me and the Lord. I was able to break every single sin. I was able to stop smoking weed. I was able to stop watching things that you know I wasn't supposed to watch. Some like some of you. And um, I cut off everything and everybody like this. The Lord Jesus Christ gave me the strength. But then after that year, the Lord Jesus Christ said, "Now I'm gonna test your heart. Now you're gonna go through the fire." And let me tell you, the drugs came back, the girls came back, the lust came back, everything came back. But I had to go through that fire to be refined, you feel me? And little by little by little by little, I had to work on these things. The Lord Jesus Christ was strengthening me and giving me the power because the battles is the Lord. It wasn't my battle, it was the Lord's. And I was willing. I am a vessel fit for the master's use, like some of you Christians, yes. And um, it's tough though. This is not a walk that is not for everybody. But if you're willing, the Lord will, he will come through. He will, he's faithful. He's a faithful, a faithful God, you feel me? And he keeps those that he loves. And he is the author and the finisher of your faith. So if you're, if you're a brand new baby believer, I'm still a baby believer and I'm still working. You feel me? But I ain't going to give up. Because we're waiting for revival. We want revival in this city. We want revival in this nation. We want to see a great move of God. You feel me? And I ain't dying before I see this move. And I am not sliding back. I ain't going to be a lukewarm Christian anymore. Like how I was in the beginning of my walk. And stick close to the Lord. Stick close to the Lord. Because I come to learn that the more that I drifted away, the harder it was to put the sins to death. You feel me? Like, I was, only, I was only at the feet of the cross, you feel me? But I wasn't getting on that cross, crucifying myself. I was not doing that. But thank the Lord He showed me. And thank the Lord He came for me. So... Like I said, the point of this channel is to do to not be deceived. Do not be deceived. And the Lord will not be mocked. If you're a Christian and you know the truth and you're out there doing what you're not supposed to be doing and you know you're doing it, you will reap what you sow. You feel me? Trust me, I know from experience. And don't go back. Do not look back. Because those that look back while they have their hand in the plow, they are not fit. They are not fit to be the Lord's disciple. You feel me? And let me tell you where the power comes from. Love. Love on them. Love on the unbelievers. Love on your believers. Love on them all. And that's where the power is going to come from. But do not compromise. If your unbelievers, you shouldn't even be with them anyways. But if the unbelievers are doing things that you shouldn't be doing, don't go along with them. And if your believers are doing things they shouldn't be doing, like some of you, 
don't go along with them. Because we are not Christians that compromise up in here. This is the new generation. This is a new generation. Old things have passed away. And the Lord is doing something new these days. You feel me? So yeah, do not be deceived. Holler at me if you got any questions. And you will hear from me soon again. You feel me? And um, I'm going to pray really quick. All right? My Father, my Father, you who are in the heavens, O oh Lord, you who reigns over all the earth, my Father, and you who sits on the mighty throne, O oh God, blessed be your mighty name, O oh Lord Jesus. Lord God, I want to thank you, Lord God, that you, that you have translated us from darkness into light, my Lord, that you have brought us out of the pit, my Father, and that you have set us upon a rock, my Lord, making our footsteps firm, my Lord. And my Father, I pray that anybody who has heard me this day, Lord, that they turn to the Lord Jesus Christ, Father. That they leave behind the works of darkness, my Lord. For we are here to expose the works of darkness, my Lord. And I pray, Lord, that we become instrument of righteousness unto you, my Lord. For we are vessels fit for the Master's use, my Father. Come, Lord, do a mighty work, Lord. Anoint the ears of those people listening this day, my Lord that they may turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. And the seed that was planted in their hearts, my Father, I pray that you keep it in there, Lord, that the enemy may not come to steal it, Father. And I pray, Lord, that your spirit remains on those that listen this day, my Lord. Keep them, Father, for thou art mighty, Lord. Thou art mighty to save, Lord God. And we boast in your glory, Lord. We boast in your mercy, Lord. We boast in your grace, Father. We boast in your majesty, Lord, for thou art majestic in all your ways, my Lord. And there is none like you on the earth, my Father. There is none like you underneath the earth, nor in the heavens, Lord God. For thou art the one and true living God, O Lord. And I pray that they may know thee, Lord, the same way that I know thee, O God. My Lord, for there is none that compares to you, my Lord. There is none that compares to thee, O God. And I thank you, Lord, and I glorify you, Lord, and I thank you for the precious blood, Lord, that shall never lose its power. I pray that you mark your believers with the precious blood, Lord, that Satan looks down and says, I can't conquer them because they got the blood of Christ on them. Lord God, I love you, Lord. I love you how I love you, my Lord. How I magnify you, Lord. How I exalt you this day, Lord God. And I lift up the name that's above all names, Lord God, the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, my Savior, the King of my heart. And I thank you, Lord, and I honor you, and I bless you beyond measure, Lord God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, Lord. Amen. Amen. So, I want to say hang in there, but don't hang in there. Overcome. Amen. Talk to you soon. God bless.